right on time. Navarra trying to get the first down with his feet, gets up to the 15-yard line, and that should be enough for the first down. On third and nine, he keeps it himself on a broken play and now has a first and 10 from their 15-yard line, really driving right now inside the red zone of Grinnell. Yeah, really did a nice job there with his feet and it really heads up play by that young man because a lot of times he would have tried to throw it into some traffic potentially, but he was able to pull it back down, use his feet, pick up that first down and uh, get a new host, new set of downs. First and 10 from the 15 yard line. CCA has put together a real great drive. This time they keep it up the middle. A great run by Gage Freeman, who's able to take it down inside the five, marked down at the four. And now it's a first and goal and the Clippers are oh, about 12 feet away from putting points on the board. Well, this has been a great offensive series for them right now. They're starting to loosen up that defense of Grinnell, and they're starting to run in between the tackles, and it really is predicated by the fact that they were able to do some things out in the perimeter. So Navarra has Freeman to his left. Navarra will keep it himself. Navarra parts the C, and that's a touchdown as he runs into a sea of blue that is the end zone. Yeah, nice offensive production there by the Clippers. I mean, they just came down, ran the ball really well, took advantage of those opportunities that the Tigers gave them and, and was able to put six points on the board. So really, really nice offensive execution there by Clear Creek Amana. And Ryan Navarro with his sixth touchdown run of the year, as long as 60, he only needed to go four on that play. So with 9.07 remaining here in the first half, the extra point is up and good. And just like that, it is a three-point game. That is a, I think it's fair to say, that's a uh, big, big drive for the Clippers, albeit still early here in the second quarter. But you just get that feeling that when you get players that are this good and you put them on the field together, yeah. you just know you got to score points to stay competitive. Well, and you don't want one team to get too far out ahead either. I mean, you got to keep this game close. And I think that's what we're going to see tonight is a really close matchup. These guys are going head to head. I mean, they're going back and forth. You got a great running back. You got a great defensive guy on the other side. You know, we got a lot of different things happening on both sides of the, of the field. But more importantly, um, these, this team, both teams are coming out to play tonight. Yeah, but you know, they, you knew they were going to play. Well, they, they have to. Well, they, <laughs> they have to. They're here. But no, they're, they're, it's the way that they're playing. They're, I'm with you. Right. I'm with you. Yeah, you knew they were going to play. And what, what I meant by that was that, you know, from from a competitive perspective, you know, they, they're going to come out poor. I mean, they're going to leave everything on the field tonight. And in the words of the great Herm Edwards, why do you play? You play to win the game. That's right. It's as simple as that. I am never going to do a Herm Edwards again. All right. That's, <laughs> that's it. Like, like a half a person appreciated that. And they just kind of heard it in the background and then just, ha ha. And that, uh, that you know, that I won't do it again. Somebody Googled it. Yeah, somebody, somebody had to Google it. Exactly. You know, Herm Edwards, the great New York Jets coach, among other stops. Last stop, most recently, Arizona State. But enough of that. 9.01 remaining here in the first half. And now Grinnell is going to try and respond. Man, two great drives for them to start things off. An 88-yard drive that was stopped short a little bit of the end zone. They had to go for the field goal. And then just before that, to open this game out, we saw a great run by Wyatt Hunter from 42 yards out to score. And that gives you all 10 points so far for the Tigers. Cole McGriff will keep it himself. Jukes a man, able to move up to the 35. Stopped right around the 37-yard line, maybe the 38, depending on that forward progress. It looks like they will give him the spot there. So it's a gain of about six to make it second and four. Yeah, McGriff is doing a nice job on it, you know, running the football as well. And, you know, the what I like about Grinnell is that every runner that seems to run the football, they keep their legs turned. You know, I see a lot of young players, you know, they, somebody touch them, they stop, they fall down. These guys keep their legs running, and that's how they break a lot of extra tackles. That's a great point. Second and four as the clock continues to run with 8.20 remaining here in the first half. 
The inside handoff. This time they keep it with Hunter. Hunter easily into the second level, into the second dairy, and now into CCA territory. How do you game plan for a machine? As he takes it down to the 44-yard line, another great run by the great running back and Wyatt Hunter as you take a look at the replay here. Yeah, you'll see just breaking tackles, man. He's just keeping those legs churning, giving stiff arms. He's doing everything he can do to keep those legs turning. He, and he's running north and south, picking up yardage. So I think it's fair to say, although Cole McGriff got the start on short notice, obviously with Dallas Sauzer not being able to play, remember he's out for the rest of the year, their starting quarterback on most days with an arm injury, unfortunately. This time they fake the handoff to Hunter, and Cole McGriff, I'd say, has fit in nicely as he gets a nice run of seven there, maybe eight depending on the spot. We'll call it second and three. It, it's certainly got to be an advantage when your backup quarterback is a senior and knows a little bit about the offense. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's extremely helpful. And, you know, both of these these quarterbacks have done a nice job tonight of, of making good, smart decisions. McGriff, again, the inside handoff to Hunter. Hunter, I don't know how he's getting through these spaces. It's almost like he's running into the space. It's like a sea of people. And then all of a sudden, you see him pop out into the second level. Yeah. I don't know how this is happening, but yet it continues to happen over and over again. I understand the frustration defenses must be having with him. Well, in, in defensive, you got to wrap up. You know, that's what it is. I mean, he's breaking these tackles because guys aren't making contact and wrapping up. And um, and, and you and, and that's typically pretty typical on a high school level is you get guys that will make contact, but they don't they don't wrap up. And you'll see there, see how he's just bouncing around. But now you got guys that wrap him up. Yeah, that's great defensive penetration there. Well done by CCA. It looks like Gage Freeman was one of the first to get through. And then a couple of blue uniforms bring him down. So that time able to contain the elusive Hunter for a loss of one to bring it second of 11. Well, maybe a chance for a breath of fresh air here as Hunter goes to catch some air on the sideline here on second and 11. Now halfway through the second quarter. You see three wide receivers to the bottom of your screen, two more up at the top here on second and 11 from the 30. Low snap, they throw towards the far sideline and that one just out of the reach of the tall receiver, Owen Kaufman. It's tough when you're 6'8 to try and grab something <laughs> off the ground. Based yeah. off my experience, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to say that. I mean, you're, I mean, you're, you're a pretty tall dude yourself, man. So sometimes you got to reach down and grab stuff. Is you know, it takes a minute. <laughs> well, it, it, especially as you get older too. I, I think that's yeah. fair to say. Age is definitely a factor when you try and reach down and grab things. There's no yeah. doubt about it. Yeah, give me a second. I'll, yeah. I'll get it. <laughs> Third and 11 with 5.53 remaining and another timeout for Grinnell. So clearly understanding the magnitude of the situation, going to have to really figure some things out to try and get this play to work out for them on third and 11. Hey, we want to remind you, while we won't be having any more Friday Night Lights live here on KCRG 9.2, we are not done giving you great broadcasts here. We want to remind you, tune in on next Thursday night. I know Daniel's got it. Boom. There it is. 7 o'clock live high school volleyball. You'll see Dubuque Hempstead take on Iowa City West. That's a long drive for the uh, Mustangs from Dubuque, but it will feel a lot better if they're able to come away with the win. Meanwhile, you look at the Trojans, they really don't care how long you're on a bus. They just want you to go home with a loss. You can catch that on 9.2. That game starts at 7 o'clock. You can watch it on KCRG.com. We've got coverage on the View It app. You can watch on so many different ways. Any live streaming piece of equipment you've got, we've got a way for you to watch it here on 9.2. Moving with the times, Lou. Oh, technology is just incredible right now. I mean, was it? I think they were saying it changes about every... 18 months or so. I mean, it's just it's just getting so much better now. So, um, it's only a matter of time until you get a TikTok. Well, it, it's going to show up in front of you. You're yeah, going to be yeah. sitting there. It's going to beam. It's going to be beamed Third somewhere. <laughs> Third and eleven. Let's see what the Tigers can dial up here. You see Hunter back in the backfield. 
And they roll it out and they fake it to him. They throw it towards the near sideline and it's just out of the reach of Cole Johnson and incomplete. So it brings up fourth down and a big stop for the Clippers here at home. Yeah, nice defense there uh, by the secondary of the Clippers. You know, they're trying to get outside. I would suspect that they're going to probably, with 548 left in the quarter, they're going to probably start going back to their bread and butter. And that's, um, that's Wyatt Hunter. But they don't, you know, another thing, too, is that they don't want to wear him out. You know, I mean, you can you can overrun a running back, to say the least. That kind of sounds weird, but you don't want to use him so much that he gets worn out. Fourth and 11, they're going deep down the sideline, and that ball is intercepted. So on fourth and 11, they go for the home run. Instead, that ball is picked off by Ben Swales, who just came up with his fifth interception of the year. And he'll be down right around the two yard line. So no matter how you look at it, it was gonna be a turnover on downs or a turnover just like that. And Swales adds on to his impressive total, his fifth pick of the year. Yeah, nice, nice, nice job by that young man. It does put CCA back up in in their um, in their area right now so they got 99 yards to go Let's go They've got 99 yards Jay-Z's got 99 problems no matter how you shake it you don't want to go 1 yard backwards as you see simply Navarra taking it under center and trying to get some freedom. A gain of three yards there will make it second and seven. Yeah, this is kind of a danger zone here. You, you get a little nervous sometimes when you're this close to the end zone. The Don't tell that to zone. Kenny Loggins. He would love himself some danger zone. <laughs> I think he took a highway to it from what I remember. Yeah, I think I do remember that too. Yeah, I just, you know, I can't remember like God. where that highway is specifically, but I know it leads to the danger zone. The inside handoff one more time to Figueroa, who leaps his way forward. Looks like he's able to get right around the 10-yard line. So three, maybe two yards short, depending on the spot. We'll be generous and call it third and two. Yeah, I, I think if Figueroa gets loose, man, I mean, he looks like the kind of guy that can take it to distance. I mean, he really does. I mean, he's a quick back, and you give him a running lane, I think he can, I mean, I think that guy can go. Well, Figueroa's longest run of the year, 85 yards. So he's proven it time and time again. This would be 90. Let's see if he can pull it off here on third and two. Navarra will keep it himself, able to get by second level, and now he's into the secondary. Jukes past a couple of defenders and going down the near sideline. Ryan Navarra inside Grinnell territory, pushed out, and a flag comes in for a late hit. So that is a huge gain, tack on the penalty, and they just got huge, huge marks that quickly. Yeah, really did. Nice job there by that young man. Is able to, I mean, he, he had the wherewithal to make a couple moves there, get out to the outside, and make it a foot race. Now, he's probably not going to win them all, but he got a heck of a lot of yards. Okay, we had a late hit. Player was out of bounds when he was hit. Personal foul. That's our guy right there. Personal foul the call. first down. Tigers. An impressive run by Navarra, and it looks like it was Hunter that was the one that hit him late out of bounds. So with four minutes and 20 seconds remaining here in the first half, CCA is rolling. You know, there was a time, I don't think the Clippers still do it anymore, but when they came onto the field, they had a little pirate ship that came along with them. There was one time I got to ride in that pirate ship, one of the happiest moments of my life. Not a lot. We got to take a lot. To... We got to get you out more, Aaron. <laughs> I never doubted that as Figueroa continues to push his way forward. Give credit to the lineman as he gets all the way up to the 23-yard line, and another flag comes in. Yeah, I think this is going to be a personal file again on Grinnell. There was some activity going on after after the play, but we'll see. We'll hear from Dead him. ball, personal foul on the defense. The Tigers. You know, I'm going to say it. You talked about it a little bit. Just thinking about all the big bodies from Grinnell. These Tigers aren't used to being pushed around. Right now, CCA seems to have figured something out, and uh, if the last two plays are any indication, I don't think they like being pushed very much. 